Hey, uh, I want to talk to you about the Venturi. This is an amazing uh, gizmo that is very easily made and uh, will uh, has un very unusual properties. Uh, and and you'll it, it's remarkable. Let's just face it. <laughs> uh, so let's go to my website uh, www.pumpfundamentals.com. Uh, you click on Visual Glossary and on the submenu here, we go right to the end and find uh, Venturi. Very hard. And we have a little section on uh, what, uh, what this uh, marvelous little gadget can do. And uh, you can buy one actually quite cheaply and hook it up to your faucet. Uh, in the kitchen and experiment with this, you know, you're going to see it's kind of uh, it's kind of cool. It's very very cheap. You can get uh, this address here, but uh, that's 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 for you to decide if you want to get. I'm not here to sell Venturi's. I'm here to explain how they work. So Venturi is a uh, basically a gizmo like this. It's uh, it's really just a pipe that has a uh, a section that reduces uh, to a smaller diameter and what will happen is if there's a connection in this area you can see that low pressure is formed in this area so that you can use this as a source of uh, low pressure or vacuum to uh, you know pull up any other liquids or vapors or things that you might want to do with that and this is how you know how uh, inter how does how does this happen how does a how do you get a low pressure out of just a, a tube that has a smaller diameter it's it's rather amazing and the the man who um, who uh, discovered how this works and the phys physics behind it, the principles of it, is called uh, Bernoulli. So he's uh, uh, he's either French or I think it's, uh, Danish or Belgian. I'm not quite sure. There there were several Bernoullis that were very very brilliant uh, mathematicians and all around uh, geniuses. And this might have been Jacob or Louis. I'm not sure, but anyway, it's one of those guys. And he explained how a, uh, a Venturi uh, tube or a, a reduction in diameter has this effect uh, of, uh, of lowering the pressure in that reduced diameter area. So what's going on? Really, it's, um, well, I'm just going to quickly give you a little insight into why it works, uh, the physics of it. This thing here is known as the Bernoulli equation. So what it's saying is, on the right-hand side you have pressure, and uh, so pressure, um, pressure, uh, yeah, pressure, and then you have velocity and static head. At point one has got to be equal to the, those same three properties have to be equal at point two. So if there's a difference in height. Uh, H1 will be different than H2, and um, these other figures are, some, are properties that you will measure, and if you introduce a reduction, you'll see that V2 is going to have to be, uh, let's say if, v, if 0.2 is here, it's going to have to be smaller, uh, or larger, sorry, than V1, and uh, if you put pressure gauges at these two points, you're going to see that P2 is going to have to be uh, uh, smaller, sorry, than P1 for this distinct balance. So this is Bernoulli's equation. If we have a straight tube, uh, we won't have a difference in height. We're, so these H1 is going to be H, H, and so it simplifies down to this. So this simply says that the velocity uh, energy plus, sorry, I don't want the H1 here, I want the P1, velocity energy plus the pressure energy at point 1 has to be equal to that at point 2. So if point 2 is a reduced area, if I come in with a given pressure at a certain velocity, my velocity is going to have to increase because all that stuff wants to get through the, uh, the reduced area. It's not going to go anywhere else, right? So V2 has to, uh, has to increase just due to basic conservation of mass. And if, it, if this term increases, then this term has to decrease. So you can see immediately that pressure at point 2 has to be less than at point 1. How much less? Well, it's going to depend on how much reduction 
we uh, get uh, I mean how yeah how much how much we reduce the pipe diameters uh, which means how much higher the velocity has to go if we reduce it quite a bit we're gonna get very very low pressures and uh, if you buy that little gizmo you can you're gonna see that you can get almost a, uh, almost the absolute vacuum uh, you're around you can get around to 28 inches of uh, of mercury and uh, you know the highest vacuum you can get is around 30 so it's uh, it's quite effective um, you know these equations don't mean too much to a lot of people so I've come up with this uh, this analogy here about a bike a cyclist going down a hill and I'm going to compare that to the fluid running through this pipe now in the case of the cyclist, we, he starts at the top of a hill. Let's say he starts, uh, he's got a little bit of speed. He's at the top of this hill. He's got a lot of potential energy, right? So that's positional energy. So that's the equivalent of the H1 and the H2 here. In the case of the fluid, we don't have positional energy, but uh, we, have, uh, we have pressure energy, right? That's the difference between these two. So this, uh, this guy's potential energy as he goes down the hill he increases in speed but he loses potential energy why because he's going down so at one point he's going to be at zero uh, potential energy because he has, he's at the lowest he can be but he'll be at his top speed so what happened all his poten his potential energy or his position energy got transferred into kinetic energy or velocity as he got down to, uh, the hill in a similar fashion, in this Venturi, we start with pressure and velocity. So we have uh, the equivalent of, poten of uh, positional energy, potentially, is the pressure energy here. So we have some pressure energy driving the liquid. The liquid has to increase in velocity, go faster, because it's going to get through. It's got to get through. There's nowhere else for it to go. So to accomplish that, if the, if the uh, velocity has to increase, then the pressure will have to drop in the same way that the, uh, the positional energy or potential energy dropped here. So we have two systems that are very, very similar. One that uses positional energy, one uses pressure. And as the velocity changes, so does the, does the other contribution of energy in the case of the cyclist, positional energy drops, potential energy drops, and in the case of the liquid, uh, the pressure energy drops. And that's why we're getting low pressure here. So I think maybe that helps. Um, there's no equations that, uh, that need explaining that, but you, if you, you can go back to those equations here, this one right here, and you'll see that this is exactly what happens. If V2 goes up, this term must go down to balance both sides of the equation. So that's how a Venturi works, and uh, it's quite amazing. Uh, try one out. You're going to see the amount of, of suction you can get is phenomenal, and uh, now you can explain it yourself to anybody who asks, uh, what, what, how does a Venturi work? It's great, isn't it? All right. Thank you, and uh, bye. So a very shy guy goes into a bar and sees a beautiful woman sitting at the bar. After an hour of gathering up his courage, he finally goes over to her and asks tentatively, Hmm, would you mind if I chatted with you for a while? She responds by yelling at the top of her lungs, No, I won't sleep with you tonight. Everyone in the bar is now staring at them. Naturally, the guy is hopelessly and completely embarrassed, and he slinks back to his table. After a few minutes, the woman walks over to him and apologizes. She smiles at him and says, I'm sorry if I embarrassed you. You see, I'm a graduate student in psychology, and I'm studying how people respond to embarrassing situations. To which he responds at the top of his lungs, What do you mean, two hundred dollars?